Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a new update by RRG Research for Monday the 16th of October. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Let's take a look at the rotation for the various stock markets around the world. I have plotted the weekly RRG on the left and the daily on the right. And the, the tails that actually catch my attention are the ones, if, if we look at the weekly, uh, that are inside weakening but curling back up uh, because these are known strong rotations. It means that these markets are entering a new up lag in an already existing relative uptrend. And that's the case for the New York FANG index, it's the case for the NASDAQ, it's the case for the Nikkei. And the S&P, it looks as if, it, if it's moving down, but if we zoom in really hard, you can see that it has already started the first attempt to curl back up. And then obviously there's the Nifty 50, which is already inside the leading quadrant. When we move over to the right-hand side of the graph, uh, of, the, of the screen, and in the daily RRG graph, then you can see that the New York FANG index is actually leading the pack uh, way up into the leading quadrant. That's completely confirming that rotation that is taking place on the weekly. So we do need to look at that group. We always do that, but now we do it a little bit more. It's also the case for the NASDAQ, NDY, which we can see here pushing off into the leading quadrant. And you can see how it on the weekly has started to curl back up. And then we go into the, uh, the Nikkei index and we have to look a little bit for that because it's inside the lagging quadrant, but you can see that it's actually sharply hooking back up. So that gives opportunities because the weekly tail is uh, pretty strong with a relatively long tail if you compare it to the NASDAQ and the S&P especially and the Nifty. You can see how the Nikkei is inside lagging on the daily, but um, has, has hooked up sharply and is now starting to move up. If we can continue this type of rotation, I expect the Nikkei to be one of the stronger markets in the world. Then obviously we do have the S&P 500, which is a little bit buried here, uh, very close to the center. So I've got to actually zoom in really strongly to separate the Hang Seng Index from the S&P. Um, you can see rapid improvement for the Hang Seng Index, although that is still pretty weak on the weekly, but you can see how the tail of the S&P has slowly moved into the leading quadrant. And uh, I expect this, if this, if this continues, um, and why not, then it will actually drag the S&P tail on the weekly back up higher. So the S&P is in the early stages of getting back into its relative uptrend versus the uh, MSCI world is what we're using here. Let's take a look at a few of those individual charts. However, before we do that, uh, a quick look at the rotations against a 0% return. That's making it all uh, in absolute terms or in price trend terms. And you can clearly see the improvement that has taken place over the last two weeks uh, across the board for stock market indices. They are now all heading towards that top right-hand quadrant. Still on the left-hand side, so they're still shrugging off the downtrend of the last few weeks. This is a daily chart, uh, but the, uh, the outlook, the direction of these tails is actually very strong. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. Um, you can see how we bottomed out uh, around just above that 4200 level, which is a support level mentioned in the S&P 500 quite often. We took out the previous high. You could argue that it is a completed double bottom. Uh, rallied a little bit and then yesterday we dropped back and we're now testing that former resistance as support. Uh, clearly on the way up there's quite a bit of resistance left. Obviously there's the area where we traded the last three days, that is uh, 43.80. More importantly there's the uh, upper boundary of that gap that occurred on September 21st. So that is going to be a resistance area 4400 and then gradually higher all the way up to 4,600. But the good news is that it looks as if that move down has stalled around 4,200 where we were expecting support. We now need to work our way higher. We'd love to see a new series of higher highs and higher lows um, getting in, in the making. But when all of that happens, then the S&P is on track for a rally towards 4,600. If we look at the RSI, 
You can see that it is now out of the oversold area. It's right in the middle, so there is no threat uh, from the RSI point of view. And if we look at the MACD, it started to turn back up very gradually, very slowly. But that's a good thing. That's supportive for a, a move higher. And then finally, the RRG lines there showing you what we already saw on the RRG chart itself. Uh, both lines now above 100 and pushing higher. A slight consolidation for RS momentum. But if that continues, then we will, we will see both RRG lines pushing higher and, uh, and dragging the S&P tail further into the leading quadrant. And the other tail that we needed to look at was the Nikkei index. And as you can see, the RRG line is still well below 100, curling back up. Uh, and that is an important thing. So it positions the tail inside lagging as we saw it, but it has started to move uh, higher. It's in the very early stages, but you know, in the early stages, you got the best opportunities. And when we look at the price chart, you see a, a, a massive rally, a massive jump off of that support area. It, was, it wasn't much, it was, a, it was a minor support area, but it worked out really well around 3,600. And you can see how last five days, five, six days, this market has pushed higher and higher. And, and yesterday we actually closed above the previous high. And it looks as if we're on the way for a test of the resistance area around, that's 33.3 and 33.7 so that's still quite a little bit to go but still on a relative basis uh, that could actually be a very nice uh, play because you can see here how if we make this chart a little longer that support that support area was actually a massive resistance area back at the start of 2021 so keep an eye on the Nikkei index because uh, I think it's actually improving very rapidly both in price and in relative terms and then we go to the NASDAQ, the US NASDAQ. Um, you can see how the ROG lines are pushing both above 100, pushing, putting the NASDAQ right into that leading quadrant uh, at strong momentum. But maybe even more important, it's actually challenging the overhead resistance coming from that falling trend line drawn from the, uh, the high of July and then following the recent high. So this is becoming a pretty um, reliable trend line, one, two, three, four, four, five, depending on how you count. And now here, uh, is, it's not a break yet, but everything looks set to uh, push higher. And if we zoom in on that area, you can see how the market has been challenging that area over the last two days. Uh, so on Friday, I'm recording this on uh, Friday morning before the market opens, it will be a pretty crucial day to see if we can actually break that or what are we gonna need uh, another rotation lower for the NASDAQ. The outlook, especially from a relative point of view, is actually pretty strong for the NASDAQ. So I'm actually gonna be a little biased that we will be able to take out that overhead resistance line. If you look at the uh, MACD, that's supportive, it has, has curled up, has triggered a, a signal, uh, and, and the RSI here is actually uh, not, definitely not oversold anymore, not overbought either, it's pushing against that. Uh, 65 area, 70 area. So all ingredients are there for the NASDAQ to push higher, get out of that consolidation area and drag the market higher. And then the New York FANG index, very much alike with the uh, NASDAQ, not surprisingly. You can see how uh, we tested support here. We held that very well and we're now on the way to overhead resistance. Uh, it's a little bit blurry here over the last couple of months, uh, but if we drag that it's 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 a very subjective way of doing it. You can you can draw it right here, and then we got these two highs and aligns with this one. Um, if we, uh, as I call it, a little bit more meat, a little bit more, so there's more price action here. Uh, then this is the level. I mean, it depends a little bit on on how you how you look at markets. I prefer my trend lines, my levels, to uh, touch as much price action as possible here uh, instead of just those one, two, three days uh, if you would put it a little higher. But in the end of the day, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a subjective thing and it's giving me guidance and, and something to, to steer on uh, with regard to levels where markets may go. Uh, and in this case, I think that the next target for the NASDAQ index is just shy of 8,000 where that trend line or that, that overhead resistance is hovering. All in all, things are looking pretty good for the, for the New York FANG index.
If you draw a trend line over the RSI uh, peaks here that has been broken, we're pushing against uh, 70. Uh, and, and remind you, uh, oversold is not necessarily a bad thing because uh, if you know how the RSI is calculated, the strongest move occur when the RSI is over 70. So we're getting very close to that level. Now let's dive into the components of the New York FANG index. And first we do that with a look at the RRG that consists of the stocks that are in the New York FANG index. We've got the weekly on the left and we've got the daily on the right. Few tails that stand out. First one from a negative point of view, it's Netflix. Look at that big red tail pushing into the lagging quadrant, rolling over inside improving just shy of getting into leading and now pushing deep into the lagging quadrant on a weekly scale. Now look at the daily. This is actually confirming that rotation. It's, they are now both pointing in the same direction. So that daily till is now actually underscoring that weakness as it can be seen on the weekly chart. So that's the first one. Now, the second one that uh, we're going to look at is we all know that the group and, and the market and especially communication services has been more or less driven by both Google and Meta in the last few weeks. Now here on the weekly you see Google inside leading but rolling over. It's, it's, uh, it's lost uh, relative momentum and Meta has already been pushed into the weakening quarter. They're still both good. They're still both on the right hand side of the graph. So that's still good. But the near term, it looks like Google and Meta have a little bit more of um, digestive work, corrective work to do. And that's underscored when you look at the daily tails, because Google is right here, alphabet I should say, <clears throat> rotating into the weakening quadrant, and so is Meta. So Meta and Google are now in a, so far as we can see, temporary setback within the relative uptrend that they have been and the way that they've been driving the market. Definitely not negative, but I think that there are now other stocks that are potentially taking over the leading role from Google and Meta inside the New York FANG index. Google and Meta tails moving into the weakening quadrant and on the weekly chart, Google is still inside leading but rolling over and Meta is inside weakening uh, with a very short tail, which means that it is a stable trend. And then just as we saw Netflix on the left hand side, the bad side of the graph, we can see Tesla on the more positive side of the graph. You can see Tesla's tail pushing from weakening into leading on that weekly RRG. And if you look at the daily tail for Tesla, it's inside weakening and pushing up. So this is now starting to underscore, confirm the positive tail, the positive rotation for Tesla as it can be seen on the weekly chart. So which stocks could now start or take over the leading role in this group from um, Google and Meta? I think that we should pay close attention to Microsoft, which is right here, as well as Apple, which is right here. And, and let me zoom in for you so you can actually see what they're doing. So here's Microsoft. That's on a nice long tail pushing into a positive direction. That's a strong heading. Apple is making a little bit more of a zigzag move, but in the end of the day, it's moving into the top right hand quadrant. They're still not there. They're, it's in the early stages, but if I need to look for stocks that could take over the leading role from Google and Meta, this is where I'm focusing. So Apple and Microsoft. And when we look at it on the daily RRG, so let me, let me put that right here. So here's Apple and Microsoft weekly. And on the daily, I need to go right in here because they're close together as well. And you can see this is the tail of Apple. And over the last two days, that, that really hooked back up. And that's underscoring that strength that we see here, that little hook uh, uh, on, the, on the weekly tail. So Apple is really waking up again and, and ready to move, if you ask me. Now look at Microsoft. This is a, a much more constructive tail on the weekly. And you can see how it's... The, the distances between the nodes is getting smaller and smaller and now Microsoft seems to be ready to curl back up and, and turn back up into that positive RRG heading between 0 and 90 degrees before actually hitting that lagging quadrant. So I'm going to keep a close eye on the rotations for Apple and Microsoft and see whether they can take over the lead inside the New York Fang Index from Google and Meta. Now let's look at a few of those individual charts. Starting with Google, 
again, nothing wrong with this chart, but you can see how it's losing some of its relative strength and relative uh, momentum. And that makes it slightly less interesting. From a price perspective, this is still a very good chart. We're pushing against, um, well, we took out the overhead resistance and it looks as if we're now testing it as support. But even if we drop a little bit further, this rhythm of higher highs and higher lows is still there. Just a temporary setback uh, for Alphabet, for Google, within its already rising trend. If we go to Meta, it's pretty much the same story. You can see how Meta is testing overhead resistance around 325, 326. You can see how the last two days we're struggling with that level. Uh, again, if we break it, very good, but you can see here how the RRG line, so that's relative strength and relative momentum, have rolled over, has pushed um, Meta into the weakening quadrant. It needs to digest a little bit of that relative strength that had picked up over the last few weeks, but it still remains a very strong chart. As I said, Google and Meta, strong charts, strong relative strength, but in the, in the near term, I think that they have to give back a little bit. They need to digest the, the rallies that we've seen there and how they let that market higher. Uh, and as I said, we're going we're gonna to take a look at uh, Apple and Microsoft in a minute to see if they can take over that leading role. Now, first, the, the real negative here, that was Netflix. And if you look at the chart, uh, this is not surprising. This price development is not very strong. And two days ago, we broke a, a pretty important support level, just above 370. And you can see how we got the follow through yesterday um, with Netflix closing around 360, completely confirming the weak relative strength and the expectation for a further decline in price, as well as, as relative strength uh, for Netflix. And then we've got the positive tail, that's for Tesla. Um, this, as you can see, this is a completely different price structure, price chart than we saw for Netflix. So Tesla is still, you know, nicely moving higher highs, higher lows. This trend line is now getting more and more validity. Uh, major low, this is like tested over a couple of weeks and still moving higher. Another test, another test, and now working our way higher off of that support line, off of that rising support line. RRG lines are curling back up, pushing Tesla into the uh, leading quadrant pretty soon, uh, I guess. And then the two stocks that I think need to be watched very closely. They're still on the weekly chart, not that good. That's because of that weak route strength that we had here. But this is the daily, the daily chart. And here you can see the daily RRG. This is that last move up, that sharp move up that we saw on the RRG for Apple. You can see how it's taking out overhead resistance uh, that was built up over the last few weeks. And right now, the, um, the way is open for a move towards 190. That's the first hurdle for Apple to take. But when Apple starts to move, that's usually a pretty good thing for the market. It's a pretty good thing for the FANG. It's a pretty good thing for technology. So all in all, I think that this is a very important chart to keep an eye on. Uh, it seems to be improving. Relative strength is improving. Relative momentum is improving. Uh, all eyes on Apple, I would say, to give you a clue for what's going on uh, in the next couple of weeks. And then to a lesser degree, we have Microsoft, relative strength, very close. You can see how these lines are very close to the benchmark, but they are inside the uh, improving quadrant. They're pushing Microsoft up uh, in terms of relative strength. And in the price terms, you can see how Microsoft has now seriously come off that support area around 310, 312, and is working its way up to the 340 area where there is a ton of resistance coming in. But that's because that is all time high area. So if we can start to take out these overhead resistance areas, I'm pretty sure that this will improve the relative strength from Microsoft and that both Apple and Microsoft can pick up the leading role inside the New York FANG index and potentially also inside the S&P 500 and the market in general. I'm going to wrap up the show right here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked what we had to say. And we will be back next week with a new update by RRG Research. Same time, same place.